Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is motor connection diagrams. Our objective is to learn to read and interpret motor connection diagrams. We'll examine Y and delta configurations and dual voltage motors. Although a related topic, this lecture does not discuss multi-speed motors. This lecture operates under the assumption the viewers watch the electromagnetic interaction, the rotating magnetic field, and the motor nameplates lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. You'll recall, an electromagnet is established in a coil of wire whereby the polarity of the resultant magnetic field is dependent upon the direction of current flow, and the strength of the resultant magnetic field is dependent upon the amount of current flow. You'll additionally recall three-phase AC synchronous and induction motors are powered by a rotating magnetic field on the stator, where the physical placement of windings around the circular perimeter of the stator, and the order, frequency, and polarity with which these windings are energized determines the direction and speed of the rotating magnetic field. Swapping applied phase sequence of any two phases would see the motor reverse direction. During the course of the aforementioned lectures, we restricted ourselves to discussing only the magnetic and physical aspects of the stator windings and largely ignored the electrical aspects. Our intention today is to rectify this oversight by discussing how one wires stator windings in a Y or a delta configuration or for low or high voltage systems. Bottom line up front, motor connection diagrams aren't paintings, poems, or pottery to appreciate, critique, or interpret as you see fit, and you get zero points for creativity. Follow the connection diagrams exactly as illustrated, otherwise you'll hurt the motor, your instruments, or yourself. An improperly wired motor might be damaged, or at the very least, not work well if it's improperly wired. This fact necessitates a brief note of caution before we begin. Do not assume these connection diagrams and terminal numbers as illustrated in this lecture are universal in nature. A thick, tangled jungle of peculiarities exist, especially for older motors and motors manufactured by shoddy companies in backward countries. It is incumbent upon you to determine the proper connection diagram for the specific motor of interest. First among our tasks is to have a working description of three-phase AC and define the term dual voltage. As a brief overview, Three-phase AC is characterized by three sinusoidally oscillated waveforms with equal magnitude and frequency phase-shifted from one another by a relative 120 degrees. A single three-phase AC system, in effect, offers a choice of two voltages, the lower line-to-neutral voltage and the higher line-to-line -line voltage. Line-to-line -line voltage is always square root 3, or roughly 1.73 times that of line-to-neutral. Light industrial three-phase AC inside the United States is characterized by a 120-volt line-to-neutral and a 208-volt line-to-line value. Three-phase AC allows two basic options, Y-configured loads, which experience the lower line-to-neutral voltage, and delta-configured loads, which experience the higher line-to-line -line voltage. This is not what I mean by the term dual voltage. A single three-phase AC system with two available voltages, line-to-neutral and line-to-line, is still a single system. The term dual voltage more appropriately means two system voltages. Manufacturers offer dual voltage or dual system motors so the products can meet the needs of industrial applications in various countries characterized by different electrical distribution voltages. One system is designated as the low voltage option with its own line to neutral and line to line voltages, whereas the other is designated as the high voltage option with totally different line to neutral and line to line voltages. As I'll soon demonstrate, low voltage configurations are associated with parallel windings, whereas high voltage configurations are associated with series windings. It should be noted, all entries in a motor nameplate, unless explicitly stated otherwise, assume the higher line-to-line -line voltage, regardless if that motor is configured in a Y or delta fashion. I say again, all entries in a motor nameplate assume the higher line-to-line -line voltage, regardless if that motor is configured in a Y or delta fashion. Manufacturers typically offer a limited range of options, normally restricting themselves to the following six choices. Three lead Y configured motors, three lead delta configured motors, six lead motors, nine lead Y configured motors, nine lead delta configured motors, and 12 lead motors. We'll examine each option in detail in a moment, but let's divide these into general classes regarding their electrical configuration and whether or not these motors are intended for single or dual voltage systems. First, Electrical configuration. As implied by their titles, three lead wide configured motors and nine lead wide configured motors are permanently pre configured as Ys, and there is nothing you can do about it. They are always Y configured motors. 
Similarly, as implied by their titles, three lead delta configured motors and nine lead delta configured motors are permanently pre-configured as deltas and there is nothing you can do about it. They are always delta configured. Six and 12 lead motors, as I'll soon demonstrate, can be hooked up in either Y or delta fashion. Let's now identify which motors are intended for use with single voltage systems or dual voltage systems. All three lead and all six lead motors are intended for single voltage operation. Whereas nine and 12 lead motors are intended for dual voltage operation. If you think about it, we are presented with two independent choices, Y or Delta and single or dual voltage, which effectively gives us 12 different options. Three lead Y configured motors, three lead Delta configured motors, six lead motors configured as Ys, six lead motors configured as Deltas, nine lead Y configured motors in low voltage configuration, nine lead Y configured motors in high voltage configuration, nine lead Delta configured motors in a low voltage configuration, nine lead Delta configured motors in a high voltage configuration, and finally, the most flexible options, 12 lead motors configured as low voltage Ys, 12 lead motors configured as high voltage Ys, 12 lead motors configured as low voltage deltas, and finally, 12 lead motors configured as high voltage deltas. Let's begin with an analysis of three lead Y configured motors. As implied by their titles, three lead Y configured motors are permanently pre-configured as Ys and there's nothing you can do about it. They're always Y configured. Electrically, one might visualize three separate windings permanently pre-bonded together in a Y fashion at a central node. Three external leads, one, two, and three allow connection to primary voltage L1, L2, L3, where swapping any two applied phase sequences reverses rotational direction. One can almost say the exact same thing about three lead delta configured motors. As implied by their titles, three lead delta configured motors are permanently pre-configured as deltas and there's nothing you can do about it. They're always delta configured. Electrically, one might visualize three separate windings bonded together in a delta fashion. Three external leads at the corners one, two, and three allow connection of primary voltage L1, L2, and L3, where swapping any two applied phase sequences reverses rotational direction. While we've got these visualizations right in front of us, let me make an important observation about electrical instrumentation on three phase AC motors. These are three lead motors, and one does not ordinarily have access to the internal connections and individual windings. This implies certain electrical properties might be easier to obtain dependent upon electrical configuration and others less so. Allow me to demonstrate. As you are no doubt aware, voltmeters are placed in parallel with the item under test. A three lead Y configured motor typically hides the central node inside the motor. Thus, it is ordinarily impossible to measure voltage across an individual winding. Similarly, you are no doubt aware ammeters are placed in series with the item under test. A three lead delta configured motor permanently bonds the windings together in a delta configuration and windings cannot ordinarily be broken apart to insert the ammeter in series and measure current through an individual winding. This is to suggest that measuring individual voltage winding in Y configured motors is hard, as is measuring current through an individual winding in a delta configured motor. Luckily, some properties are easier to obtain dependent upon configuration. Measuring current through an individual winding in a Y configured motor is easy. An ammeter can always be inserted in series between the source and the external lead of the winding of interest. Similarly, measuring voltage across an individual winding in a delta configured motor is easy. Voltage is a two point measurement. A voltmeter would be placed across the two external leads of the winding of interest. In summary, it's easy to measure current through a Y configured winding, but hard to measure voltage across it. The opposite can be said about delta configured motors. It's easy to measure voltage across a delta configured winding, but hard to measure current through it. For this reason, when working with balanced three phase AC systems like three phase AC motors, one customarily employs what is known as the single watt meter method, which utilizes measurements entirely external to the motor. A line to line voltage measurement is external to the motor, as is a line current measurement. Total apparent power delivered to the motor is equal to square root three times the line to line voltage times the line current, regardless of the electrical configuration of the motor, Y or delta. Related to today's topic of discussion, motor connection diagrams, you should understand that certain configurations preclude invasive inspection and some electrical properties aren't as easily obtained as one might think. This being said, line to line voltage and line current readings are always an option because they're entirely external to the motor and the single watt meter method can be used to calculate apparent power delivered to the motor under inspection 
regardless of configuration, Y or delta. Let's now examine six lead motors. These motors consist of three individual windings with two ends each. Winding 1-4, winding 2-5, winding 3-6 are isolated from one another and both terminals of each winding are externally accessible. Six lead motors are considered single voltage motors and that they're intended to be used with one predetermined electrical system with an associated line to neutral and line to line voltage. When configured as Ys, terminals 4, 5, and 6 are tied together at a single node and primary voltage L1, L2, and L3 are connected to terminals 1, 2, and 3 where swapping any two applied phase sequences reverses rotational direction. In the Y configuration, the windings would experience a smaller line to neutral voltage. A motor connection diagram illustrating a six lead motor setup might look something like this. L1 to 1, L2 to 2, L3 to 3, and 4, 5, and 6 tied together. Another option exists. When configured as deltas, terminal 4 is tied together with 2, 5 is tied together with 3, and 6 is tied together with 1. And primary voltage L1, L2, and L3 is connected to the conjoined terminals 1, 6, 2, 4, and 3, 5, where swapping any two applied phase sequences reverses rotational direction. In the delta configuration, the windings would experience the higher line to line voltage. A motor connection diagram illustrating a six lead motor set up as delta might look something like this L1 to 1 and 6, L2 to 2 and 4, and L3 to 3 and 5. This is to suggest that a six lead motor is slightly more flexible than a three lead Y or a three lead delta because it can act as a Y or a delta depending upon the manner in which it is connected. In fact, an extremely popular reduced voltage starting method known as a Y start delta run reduced voltage starter takes advantage of the adaptable nature of this type of motor. As implied by the title, a Y start delta run reduced voltage starter starts the motor on a Y configuration such that each winding experiences a smaller line to neutral voltage and thus draws smaller inrush current. Then after a predetermined time allowing the motor to accelerate, the Y configuration is broken and reassembled as a delta so each winding experiences the larger line to line voltage thus drawing more current. This two stage start reduces inrush current and modifies the starting torque of the motor under its direction. We'll examine Y start delta run reduced voltage starters in greater detail in later lectures. While we've got these visualizations of six lead motors and Y and delta configurations in front of us, Allow me to reiterate an earlier observation. This is not art class and you get zero points for creativity. Follow the connection diagrams exactly as illustrated, otherwise you might damage the motor, your equipment, or yourself. As presently illustrated, Y configured six lead motor ties together leads four, five, and six, and the delta configuration goes one, four, two, five, three, six, when traveled in a clockwise fashion. Consider the following subtle modifications and their not so subtle consequences. Consider a Y configured motor with leads 4, 5, 3 forming the central node of the Y. There's still three windings in a Y configuration, but this won't work. You know, winding 3, 6 is flip flopped. Similarly, consider a delta configured motor going 1, 4, 2, 5, 6, 3 when traveled in a clockwise fashion. There's still three windings in a delta configuration, but this won't work. You'll again note winding 3, 6 is flip flopped. You might initially think that any end of any winding will do equally as well as any other, but they don't for a rather important reason. You'll no doubt recall that current direction influences magnetic polarity. Connected in this improper fashion, winding 3-6 would be a north when it's supposed to be a south, and vice versa, hopelessly wrecking any chance of establishing a smoothly rotating magnetic field in the stator. Follow the connection diagrams exactly as illustrated. 